I'm Mark Lorenzato. This video is about azithromycin, also known as ZPAC, and other macrolide antibiotics. This is a structure of erythromycin. It has a lactone ring and sh two sugar molecules attached to it. It is the common structure of the macrolides. This is a picture or a schematic of a different lactone ring, slightly larger with a nitrogen and two sugar molecules. This is azithromycin. The main issue about antibiotics is that they are derived from molecules and mostly molecules produced by bacteria in bacterial warfare against other bacterial colonies. So when we introduce them to our body, that's what we're dealing with is bacterial warfare, one colony of our own bacteria versus another. They affect our gut, they affect our skin, they affect our whole body. The macrolides also stimulate modulin and modulin is a polypeptide 15 amino acids long in the gut that enhances, uh, stimulates secretion by causing contractions. So this is a side effect of the macrolides. It is not an allergy. You will feel loose stools, crampy abdominal pain, possibly from the use of azithromycin. It's important to use antibiotics when they're not contraindicated and they're targeted to the specific bacteria we're trying to eradicate. Sometimes we have to use broad spectrum because we don't know what we're looking for. In the case of azithromycin, for instance, if we're aiming to try to get Haemophilus influenza, there's probably a better antibiotic out there. That is a gram-negative bacteria. The gram-negative bacteria need antibiotics a little bit more than the gram-positive because the gram-negatives are resistant somewhat to our own antibiotic attack as part of our immune system. The people that are allergic to penicillin, which usually treat the gram positives particularly well, sometimes will use erythromycin or azithromycin instead, and they do not have identical coverage. That's a concern. In general, uh, azithromycin is very good for bronchitis, uh, community-acquired pneumonia, pharyngitis, but not streptococcal pharyngitis, not the common beta hemolytic strep, sinusitis, ear infections, and atypical organisms like such as mycoplasma, as well as chlamydia, rickettsia, legionella, and mycobacterium, a long list of things that will be effective against. It's important when choosing an antibiotic that it gets into the tissue that we are uh, aiming at and that in the case of a very severe infection, we have enough, bad, uh, enough spectrum of the antibiotic to eradicate the types of bacteria that are involved. Um, there is also concerns, particularly with the macrolide, for toxicity. In this case, macrolides can promote dysrhythmias or abnormal heart rhythms in people that are prone to it. These are generally people that have congestive heart failure or history of heart dysrhythmias or are on medications that cause a prolonged QT interval in their, electro, in their EKG, in the conductive, electrical conductive of their heart contraction. So some discussion needs to be done between us if you have a heart condition and a review of the chart. If you're allergic to one of the macrolides, you should avoid the other ones. Uh, the macrolides include azithromycin, clarithromycin, erythromycin, and others. So um, frequently people that, as I said, are, don't tolerate the beta-lactam antibiotics um, because of allergies, penicillins, cephalosporins, we will do macrolides. Um, there are other particular targeted reasons why we might do this. Allergies are not common. Maybe 3% of the population are less. Um, if you have a skin reaction of any kind, please let us know. Good communication. Also, if you have liver disease or kidney disease, before you take the antibiotic, let us know and we'll determine if it's really of value to you. If you have myasthenia gravis, which is an autoimmune disease of the peripheral nervous system, please let us know. Um, heart rhythm disturbances of any kind or previous heart attack, please have a discussion. If you are low in potassium, if you've had diarrhea significantly, magnesium, lower magnesium, or have a slow heart rate, all these things can be of concern. Nausea can be a side effect of antibiotic use, particularly macrolides. Ginger can be used to help with this. Also the over-the-counter medications, Dramamine, which is diphenhydramine and 8-chlorothiophylline is beneficial. The diphenhydramine alone or dimenhydrinate, both over-the-counter prescriptions for hydroxyzine, uh, anti-nausea H2 or antihistamine that's very good um, can be used. And in diarrhea, uh, just oral rehydration, soups, liquids are good. Potassium-rich foods are very beneficial. And loperamid, which is over-the-counter for serious diarrhea, can be used. 
Also, the, the antibiotics may cause a lessening of certain population of bacteria in your intestine that are critical for producing vitamin B12. So you could become vitamin B12 depleted as well as other vitamin depleted, including C, after a course of antibiotics and may need to replenish those. Probiotics can help stabilize the gut from overgrowth of one type of bacteria over another and tend to introduce the bacteria that are generally healthy for the gut. In conclusions, azithromycin is a common antibiotic used. It is of great value for eradicating or eliminating or promoting the elimination of many bacteria that cause path pathology, that cause misery and some destruction. And, um, but we need to pay attention to what the pharmacist says and to any side effects you may have. Also, you will have some gut irregularity because of the modulin stimulation. While taking the macrolides, it's appropriate to stay away from the statins, to stop taking your atorvastatin or simvastatin or pravastatin or whatever, as well as avoiding grapefruit. Both the, mac both the statins and grapefruit will affect your P450 enzyme system in the liver that is part of the elimination and detoxification of the macrolides. Therefore, for the short period of antibiotics, good to avoid these things. Strep pharyngitis is not effectively eradicated or treated with azithromycin. You still may benefit because most people can eliminate the strep without antibiotic use. Bacteria um, can become resistant to azithromycin that normally are not resistant. So if you do not resolve your infection by five, six days out, probably time for another discussion. Also, azithromycin may stay in your system, likely will, for a week following the uh, ending of taking it, suggesting that you may get better and better at, for the days after completion. And as I said before, taking probiotics is beneficial. Usually, I ask people to take them four hours before or after they take their antibiotics, just so that the antibiotics are not working against the probiotics. Hope that helped. Thank you. Let's have a discussion if there's any concern.